You just don't believe this stupidity because recently Wagner did absolutely ridiculous attack in Bakhmut area, which resulted in them losing 230 plus people. And at the same time, the Minister of Defense of Ukraine, Oleksiy Reznikov, says that they are preparing a surprise in the Black Sea for Russians. But more about all of this in just a couple of minutes. What's up, investors? <laughs> it's the Russian dude. And let's go straight to the point and see some most recent footage, and as always, we begin with some pretty ridiculously cringe material. So, in this first picture, it is one of the billboards from Russia, where the gentleman's club is inviting the participants of this special military operation for one of their shows completely for free. And I mean, I think you would agree that going to war is pretty scary for any single human being, but it looks like that sometimes the physical needs of a man can be overpowered by the fear of death. But what do I know? But okay, let's get back to a little bit more serious news. And recently the Ministry of Defense of Russia decided once again to show its iron fist and its nuclear preparedness, so they shared us this video of the test launch of the intercontinental ballistic missile. At the same time, they also showed this video of one of the mining vehicles showing it in action, and if you've never seen how it works, now it's your perfect opportunity. But what they forgot to mention is that exactly one year ago, Ukrainians using Neptune missiles were able to sink a Russian flagship called Moskva. And recently, Ukrainian side released this very interesting video, which shows exactly those missiles, which will be responsible for sinking this ship. And speaking about this particular attack, according to the Minister of Defense of Ukraine, Oleksiy Reznikov, Ukraine is preparing another surprise for Russians in these waters. Obviously, at this very moment, the details are not disclosed, but he says that they are planning to do something similar as sinking of Russian flagship Moskva, of the same big magnitude. So, let's wait and see. And to make it even more devastating for the Russian army, right here we have a picture of the most modern combat tank of Russians, T-90, which has been recently captured by Ukrainians and sent to America. So now it will be Americans who will be discovering the possibilities, capabilities and electronics of this tank in order to develop uh, weapons which will be very successful against this particular machine. Yes, if you also think that all these recent events are pretty humiliating for the Russian army and the Ministry of Defense of Russia, can you please like this video and subscribe to my channel to see how many of us are right here, right now. You can also follow my second channel, The Russian Dude Clips, where I post under one minute summaries every single day. The link will be down below. Right, now let me give you just a couple more words about this updated situation on the leaked Pentagon documents, and then we'll talk about the Western support to Ukraine. And so, first of all, the FBI has now a primary suspect, Jack Teixeira. I hope I pronounced his last name correctly. And basically, this 21-year-old young man, he was sharing these leaked documents on his Discord server, mostly with his friends, and I have no idea why, maybe just to show off that he has access to them, because he was a part of the US military. As for now, he is the primary suspect of this case, and the FBI already detained him. And besides the things that we might already know from these leaked documents, another thing is that according to Pentagon, this war might continue way beyond 2023, and maybe not even 2024 we'll see the conclusion of this conflict. According to Pentagon, neither of the sides will have the significant advantage on the battlefields. Russia primarily because they are losing so much resources, both in human terms and in military vehicles, and Ukrainians because the Western Mule support is not as fast, and just in general, obviously, this country is much smaller than Russia. For this reason, Pentagon thinks Russia will not be able to capture significant territories anymore, and on the other hand, Ukrainians will maybe be able to liberate some parts of them, but not as much as it was to be in the Kherson and in Kharkov regions. At the same time, Russia might do something as stupid as intensifying their attacks in the east of Ukraine, specifically around Bakhmut and Donetsk regions, bringing even more people and machinery using the same old tactics, which will deplete the resources even faster. 
And I mean, that's not the very first time Russia is doing something ridiculous. And we'll talk about this stupid decision in Bakhmut by Wagner, which cost them 230 plus soldiers very soon. Ukrainians obviously do not agree with these conclusions by Pentagon, because they claim that in the very beginning no one also believed in Ukraine, that they'll be able to win against the second army in the world, and now look what happened. And one of their main arguments is that you can never underestimate the will and the morale of people who defend their own country. And ultimately, according to this leaked Pentagon documents, the total number of losses from both sides can exceed 354,000 people, with the vast majority of 200 plus thousand being from the Russian side. And so yes, I do have some of these leaked documents on my Patreon, the link will be down below. Alright, let me give you just a couple more words about the Western support to Ukraine and that Russia will be paying for the restoration of Ukraine. Yes, you heard me right. And then we'll talk about the update from the south and the east of Ukraine and this absolutely ridiculous decision by Wagner. And so yes, in this first picture which came to us from Poland, we can see the Norwegian instructors teaching Ukrainian soldiers how to use Lipar 2 tanks and armored personnel carriers called Bergen Panzer. Next we have the statement by the Prime Minister of Poland, Mateusz Morawiecki, who is saying that the country is ready to send its MiG-29 planes to Ukraine because they simply don't need them anymore, because right now they have much more advanced models, such as FC. 16th and F-35. And speaking about the aerial vehicles, right here we have a picture of the UK S-61C King helicopter, which is already being used by Ukrainians. And so, most of you already know that Finland joined NATO recently, <laughs> and guess what? Finland already announced one of their very first military trainings next to the borders with Russia in the near future. And at this point, pretty much yes, without a doubt, Putin has lost in its major objective not to let NATO expand. But besides that, many countries do not want ever Putin to see on their soil, such as for example the country of Austria, which says if president of Russia ever steps on the territory of Austria, he will be arrested. And just now, please uh, let me know in the comments from which country you are from and if your country will arrest Putin as well. And ultimately, if you remember, one of the very first things that America did when this war started is that they froze Russian assets located in American banks. And as of right now, these assets are estimated to be at 300 billion dollars. And so, guess what? Ukraine will eventually need to be restored and repaired, and who will pay for this? Well, Western countries for sure they will donate some money to help with this, but America now says that they might and most likely they will use these frozen Russian assets to restore Ukraine. So it will be Russia who will lose in this war and then they will use their own money to help rebuild the country. And the only one thing missing for the total defeat of Putin is the actual military defeat of the Russian army on Ukrainian soil. And so yes, speaking about the military defeat, I think it is now worth mentioning the updated situation in the south and the east of Ukraine. And we begin with the south, where as you can see, recently according to these satellite images, Russians were digging and fortifying their trenches mainly in the northern part of Crimea. And so, if you have been carefully watching my previous videos, these are the main locations of these fortifications that Russians right now have in the south of Ukraine which kinda allows us to assume where they expect the Ukrainian counteroffensive to come from. Next we go to the east of Ukraine, where according to the report by the Institute for the Study of War, Russians conducted limited offensive next to Kriminna with no reported success. And as we take a look at this map, it shows us the changes in territorial control, we can see that both Russia and Ukraine got a little bit closer to each other along Svatovy Kriminna front line. As we go to the south, we can see that Russians got a little bit closer to this highway to the west of Nova Bakhmutivka. 
And then, according to the Ukrainian sources, they were able to destroy a Russian jamming station located deep inside Donetsk region using High Mars. And the purpose of this jamming station was obviously to intercept and not to let Ukrainians communicate effectively. Speaking about Donetsk, Russians reportedly started forming Storm Z assault brigades, with the main responsibility will be to capture Avdiivka city. This report came to us several days ago, and as you can see there was not a single significant progress around the city so far. But on the other hand, we have yet another video of a Ukrainian FPV drone, which is being used to precisely target Russian positions. But unfortunately YouTube does not like this drone footage, that is why I had to upload the entire version with sounds to my Patreon, in addition to hundreds of other uncensored materials, which I upload there every single week. The link will be down below and there is still one week of free access. But pretty much yes, the most important event of the past couple of days is that incredibly ridiculous and stupid decision by the Wagner commandment in Bakhmut. And what basically happened is that that according to a Wagner prisoner captured as a result of this failed offensive, I would say that these are the best words I can use to describe this. The Wagner commander saw that Ukrainians were occupying some higher territorial position and then he was like, me want this position, you attack. But uh, sir, this does not make sense, uh, Ukrainians are fortified in this position and it does not give us any tactical advantage. No, I don't care. Me want this position, you, 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 you go, you capture, me want this, you go now. And in the best practices of the Russian military commandment tactics, several hundred Wagner soldiers were sent to capture this incredibly insignificant position, and yes, you guessed it, without any artillery or machinery support, and approximately 200 of them were eliminated as a result of this attack. But because it was waves after waves of waves of Russian soldiers, they were able to push Ukrainians away from this position. But wait, there is more. Because Ukrainians the very next day, they're like, okay, so they occupied our position, we know everything about this territory, we know that there are no fortifications and they don't even try to protect themselves, and so... Guess what? They started using artillery against this concentration of Russian forces, eliminating 30 more. And then Ukrainians started going back to recapture this height, and they captured along with this approximately 4 prisoners of war. And this story was according to one of them. So it pretty much gives you a perfect understanding why Russians are still relatively able to capture some territories, and why they're suffering such significant losses. But, I mean, the human resource is not indefinite, that is why sooner or later it will be over, or they'll just simply stop following the orders and sabotage. Because how much more you can tolerate this? And so yes, ultimately, without a doubt, this is most certainly not a sustainable long-term strategy. And sooner or later, Ukraine will prevail. Because using proper military tactics in 21st century obviously wins. And just once again, if you don't want to miss any of these updates on this Ukrainian counteroffensive, can you please subscribe to my channel? It only takes one click. The best way to support my work is by becoming my Patreon, or you can unlock exclusive channel badges by becoming my channel member, or just simply use a PayPal link. All of them can be found to the right and down below. Thank you so much for your attention, Tavarishi, and see you tomorrow.